Welcome back to On The Ground. I'm your host, Shannon. Okay, so uh, on the previous video, uh, I showed you that I did in fact get the, uh, uh, the 300 to start. Um, the, the positives were swapped, which means the positive uh, that goes directly to the starter uh, was hooked directly to the battery instead of going through the relay. And uh, so that's why it was getting so hot. There was that draw on the battery and it was sending all that power to um, directly to the starter, which is why it was trying to start. Um, I, um, when I looked at it, you know, the first few times, I just didn't see it uh, because it's so small and the cables, uh, the way they are in there, uh, the way that the cables are molded and the way they appear, it looks like everything's connected the way it's supposed to be. Uh, I didn't follow the cables, but um, I still didn't notice it um, until I looked more thoroughly and really tracked down where each cable was going. And then I looked at the wiring diagram and uh, I compared that with what I was looking at and following the cables. And then I said, well, okay, let me swap these positives and see if that's the issue. Which when you swap them, the way, it's, the way they're, they're actually supposed to be hooked up, it don't fit, the, the cable management doesn't work as well. It's, uh, I, I'm gonna have to, revisit that which means I'm gonna have to go in again take that out clean it out and I got some zip ties today and maybe uh, do some cable management so everything's a little more uh, neater but uh, it just you know it, it, it just doesn't seem the way the cables are molded and stuff it doesn't seem like it would hook up that the way that it's supposed to be hooked up for it to be connected correctly but, uh, you know, it's just a little unusual, but uh, I can address that somehow. I'll figure that out. But that was the issue I was having. Um, when, when I was doing that, and it was seeing a lot of power to the starter, it kind of sounded like, you know, it may have, uh, may have damaged the starter. I don't know. Uh, it may be just fine. Uh, but I'll have to... It just seems like it's a little windy uh, when you push it, um, but um, I don't know. We'll, ch we'll check to see. Uh, I, I believe a new starter motor is like three hundred something dollars. Like three hundred. I can get yeah, it's like three hundred something. But um, if I have to, but we'll see. But uh, it works. I mean, you know, it's just kind of. Got that irritating sound. As long as it's not damaging anything else, it'll be fine. I'm just kind of glad that it wasn't a more complicated issue that would have required me to replace the wiring and things like that. Uh, I, which gets leads me to get to this point. Um, because I didn't know what it was, um, and you know the, the resources I have, uh, the book and the internet. Um, there just didn't seem to be something that basically said, if this is ha what's happening, then this is what the problem is. Um, but um, it would require me to uh, diagnose the issue by checking the voltage and um, seeing what was getting power, what wasn't, and what the reading of that would be. So I ordered a, it's a, it's a digital multimeter. I got it off Amazon. Uh, I did. I did watch some reviews uh, about this multimeter. Uh, I looked at getting a Fluke, which you know has a long-standing reputation as uh, good multimeters, voltmeters. But um, um, the the equivalent of this one. Uh, with a certification of calibration uh, flu. It's, uh, it's 
one seventeen, I believe. You can maybe use the one fifteen, which is two hundred and twenty dollars. The fluke one seventeen is two hundred and fifty. But for one that's calibrated and more precise with the certification that it's uh calibrated, it will run you three hundred and twenty dollars. I paid twenty twenty two dollars for this multimeter and it's pretty it's pretty accurate. And I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about it a little bit. This is kind of an unboxing because I haven't even I haven't even unboxed it. It's the Cronova MS 8233D. The Cronova Cronova MS 8233D digital multimeter. Um, I'll uh, I'll put a description of it in the video. I'm not really going to do a review. This is kind of an unboxing. But uh, for, for $20, $22, which I believe was all I paid for this, and there's plenty of videos on YouTube about people doing uh, reviews on this. Uh, for what I was doing, I may get a fluke in the future, maybe, but this is all I've seen as being necessary. Uh, I haven't even looked at it. I mean, other than online and stuff. But, uh, require me to take, take, take the black off. But, uh, that's all it really amounts to. Haven't put it to test, uh, haven't tested it, used it. So, I can't give you a review. It's not even an official unboxing, but, you know. Does uh, I guess I gotta unscrew that. Put this nine volt in. Yeah. Might get me a better battery, but it's fine for now. It comes with it, but it does uh, have a stand where you can stand it like that. But you know, it has you know, uh, direct current, alternating current. That is all that stuff. It's a cat three. But, uh, you know, it's just a twenty dollar uh, multimeter. I didn't even have one, so better than nothing. Um, but uh, for twenty dollars versus two hundred fifty or three hundred twenty with the fluke, you know, uh, you know, I usually try to buy stuff that's made in the United States and stuff like that, but, uh, or, or, you know, stuff that I don't have to constantly replace, but, um, yeah. But anyways, um, you know, for $20 and a good, uh, the good reviews that come with this, it's probably worth checking out if you need one for only twenty twenty two dollars on Amazon. Uh, Cronova MS eighty two thirty three D has pretty much all the functions you need. But uh, I'll uh, I'll put that battery in later or something. But uh, I don't need to do it right now. But yeah, I ordered that because I thought I was gonna have to run through the whole situation which I might still need to do something with it so it doesn't hurt to have it but uh, yeah so got that um, I worked some other tools some stuff uh, some axle grease uh, marine grade um, um, I 
some some tools that I need. Nothing major. Mm. I mean, plus it comes with this little case. I mean, for what it is, for like twenty, twenty-two dollars, and it has pretty accurate, you know, for a do-it-yourselfer, or you know, work on an ATV or whatever, you know, it, it should be pretty good. I mean, um, let me look through this just briefly. your job and you need the best of the best or something because you use them every day then you might want to get something like a flu but I don't you know it's kind of hard to spend three hundred and twenty dollars on something versus twenty and it pretty much does the same thing I mean you know about how many of those <laughs> one of these for one of the other so it's kind of hard to justify spending that much unless like I say it's your job and you know you actually need something like that but um yeah so that that's that's what's going on with that um I'm going to clean it up I got some uh electrical connector cleaner so I'm going to uh, revisit those um, connectors clean them out a little bit ordered some fuses I'm going to replace I'm not going to replace the fuses I take that back I'm going to check the fuses and I'll have extras if I need to replace them um, let's see um, I had to reorder the the grips because um, I was sent back. I don't know what went went wrong. Apparently, they said it was an incomplete address, but I don't know how that happened. But you know, it's not a big deal. Uh, it's not not a time sensitive thing. So let's see. Uh, what else there is uh, to go over? This is a brief video. Um, so yeah, we're gonna clean it up. Uh, we're gonna replace that axle. Got brake pads, so we're gonna, and some brake fluid coming. Uh, so we're gonna bleed the brakes. Um, probably clean some of the parts. See what all we need to do. Uh, get it functioning properly, the brakes, but before that, um, I'm going to um, uh, address the engine and the carburetor. Um, not that there's real, really anything wrong with the carburetor, but I, I kind of, if I'm going to go ahead and adjust the valves and stuff, might as well take the carburetor out and clean it as well, you know, and, uh, and then I'll record try recording all that um, the last time when I was doing the battery thing it's you know there's plenty of videos on how to's uh, or you know it's a similar process but uh, I did and I still got it on my phone but it just ain't much to show as far as that goes so I'm not going to upload that um, but the other stuff I will my plan I was hard pressed for time I, which is probably one of the reasons why I overseen overlooked that I mean you can't really tell it by looking at it you have to really get in there and look at it uh, 
But once you familiarize yourself and you know, then it's different. But when you don't know and you see it, then, you know, you wouldn't, it doesn't look like it. It looks like that puzzle goes to the relay and that puzzle goes to the battery. But, uh, yeah. The, the puzzles on the battery need to be on the relay and the puzzles on the relay need to be on the battery. Because all it was, they were just, that's what the issue was. But I, um, I figured it out, so. Not really complicated, just like I said before, it was probably something I was just overlooking, and well, that's what it was. They were just backwards. Uh, you wouldn't notice them unless you really looked it over, though, or already know that. I know, I know that they, that, you know, the power needs to go through the relay, because the relay opens and closes the circuit you don't need all that power going to the starter motor except for when you hit the start button you know you just need that electricity uh, just to start initially and then you know and that's it and then it closes but um anyways um yeah so just send power straight to the starter instead of through the relay but, uh, uh, so let's see, what else we want to do? Once we get this ATV sorted out, uh, maintenance and service, and, you know, uh, you know, I have to do it when I have time, when the weather permits. But once we get it up and going, we're going to take it somewhere and ride it. I'll make videos of that, POVs or something. But, uh, we'll figure something out. So, well, I'll, uh, I'll keep you informed and updated here on the underground. And, uh, hopefully I'll have something more entertaining to offer you on the next episode. So, uh, if you haven't clicked the subscribe, please click the subscribe. And, uh likes or uh, make any comments if you want on any of the videos um, i appreciate it but um yeah so i'll see you here again on on that